Hi everyone, thanks for joining. We're gonna talk about personalization with intent stuff today. Or you can just take a nap. That's fine too, after lunch, I won't mind. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be talking about uh, intent-based platforms, specifically Sixth Sense. So it'll be pretty specific. Um, so if you're uh, using that or interested in it, um, hopefully this is interesting. Uh, my name is Judd. Uh, I come from UX and strategy and that kind of thing. Um, but the big three uh, ABM platforms I've worked with, so uh, demand-based terminus and Sixth Sense, um, have experience with. So coming at this from a fair bit of uh, at least some hands-on knowledge with these platforms that are sometimes opaque if you haven't spent the cost to onboard them, all that stuff. Um, I'm with Elevated Third. We're a B2B agency. Um, and uh, we kind of integrate um, uh, MarTech with Drupal. That's sort of our sweet spot. So a lot of this comes from um, dealing with enterprise and the tools that they use and how to bring that to um, Drupal and the best way to get that stuff to work together. So lots of big clients. Um, uh, we do end-to-end, -end, so strategy all the way through Drupal. So a lot of this comes from the need uh, around B2B to speak their language, use their tools, um, kind of be able to hang in those conversations, which are a little bit in higher level, lots of zeros attached to that stuff. So knowing how to get these things to work together technically, and then knowing how to best use them is sort of where we're seeing ourselves these days. Um, just a little stat from Bombora to uh, sort of orient us. When you're doing ABM, account-based marketing, um, people are using at least one platform, like Sixth Sense, um, but sometimes more, sometimes a lot more. Um, and it's very expensive, and there's a lot of orchestration that happens between them, but there's a lot of uh, insight that these tools can provide, which is why everyone's using them, and which is why they're very expensive. Um, so just some context there. Maybe just hands people working for an organization who uses an ABM platform, a few. Sixth Sense specifically, a few. Okay, cool. Um, everyone else is... Curious. Okay, uh, so we're we really focus on this um, Drupal Martech ecosystem. So sort of what uh, Dries was talking about on the uh, keynote today, the wave going up. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of this is about just continuing that idea of being open with a lot of APIs and the these systems that have connection points that lets us do other things are going to survive. We think, um, and so the ones that play nice uh, tend to get more traction, the ones that don't tend to fall off, at least for us. Um, so that's really where we see ourselves. And so this is really just um, a focus on why we care about these things. So Acquia being sort of enterprise focus and then Sixth Sense as well, like trying to get these two things to play together, Drupal specifically with Sixth Sense is um, how we're coming at this whole thing. So uh, let's talk about intent in terms of uh, account-based and uh, ABM and that type of thing, because the words can mean a lot of different things. <clears throat> and if you have questions, no need to wait to the end. You can just interrupt. OK, so uh, for today, our context, it's really the culmination of signals that represent the needs of an account. So account would be company, if you're not familiar with ABM, so whatever your vertical is, you can just think of it that way. Um, like what are they trying to do and where are they in their decision making process um, along the way to do it. So uh, like I said, our focus is B2B. So if you're not B2B, um, who, who's in here B2B focus? Like half, okay, not quite, okay. So if you're more B2C maybe or academic, um, this might not be super relevant, but your customer experience might be just as complicated. In B2B, it's very, very noisy, right? It's long sales processes. Uh, there's no single decider, so it's usually a group of people deciding. It's very complicated. We think we need an X. Let's shortlist some X. Let's do some research on an X. I gotta propose my boss to an, about an X. And all these things are very, very expensive, and people's jobs are on the line if they pick the wrong thing. So it's high risk and, uh, it's very long, sometimes like years long, where you're trying to cultivate people a long cycle. So when we think about personalization, it's like we're really coming at it from how can you help this mess be a little bit cleaner, um, which is challenging. 
Um, yeah, so months, years even, um, 18, two years, something like that, you're nurturing people. Um, and it's not just the technology process, there's a lot of human effort involved in um, this mess, trying to move people along the funnel. Uh, and that's what we're talking. And this is the big thing with that chart. It's like no one wants to be talked to along the way. It's becoming a big problem, uh, including me. So I'm guessing no one in this room likes any of these things. Uh, like cold sales marketing emails, I'm sure everyone gets at least five, 10 a day, maybe. Um, random sales calls, no one likes that. Apologies to salespeople in the room. And then forms that inevitably, inevitably lead to the other two, which is why people, if you're in B2B, you get tons of Gmail form submissions because no one wants you to call them, right? So everyone's trying to avoid and evade all of this stuff, which I get it, right? I use ad blockers and all that stuff just like everyone else. So, but it poses a challenge for uh, businesses, right? So, and they're becoming less effective. So you might be reading things about like MQL strategies in general are just starting to become less and less effective just because there's so much noise out there. Um, so Sixth Sense, um, I guess a little plug, uh, they're an account-based marketing platform, but it's really about like uh, funnel intent. So what they're trying to do is uh, they call this whole thing the dark funnel. So if you go back to that journey, like. 80% of it happens, and people don't want you to ever talk to them. So the trick is, like, well, can we maybe see what they're doing during that process so that we could engage when it is maybe most receptive to that? That's basically what they're trying to do with this stuff. And they're using intent signals to try to figure out and predict along that path where you might be. So if someone does reach out with an email, they're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm in the decision phase. I've, I'm already looking at vendors. I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, so the timing is super important, uh, and that's what they're trying to do with these systems. Right, so they do account identification, which is important for uh, personalization. If you're doing real time, which we'll talk about. So that would be like on the fly, sorry, after lunch. On the fly, right, the company identification. And then there's keyword intent, so like what they're looking at, which is not the same as search keywords, we'll talk about that. And then the targeted advertising, which is really like, it's not the same as, it's, it's display, but it's more about like feeling out what people are um, interested in, in terms of everything that you do and where they might fall and using ads as sort of a litmus test of where they're at. So you can plug all these things into personalization on the site, and so hopefully you're already connecting the dots there, how that might be useful. Right, so what prospects are interested in before they ever hit the site is basically their and all the other platforms' uh, model, right? That's why they charge and have so many zeros on their price tags um, is because this is super valuable if it, if it works. Um, some of you are probably wanting to do this um, after realizing how many uh, platforms are tracking you and trying to predict all of the stuff that you're doing, just kind of the way it goes with B2B. Um, so uh, that's more like the context on the Sixth Sense um, platform. So let's talk about keywords, which should be familiar to most of you. So they're like explicit keywords, uh, not that kind of explicit, but very targeted to an intent, right? So something like account-based marketing, they tie very specifically, and all of paid search is tailored to trying to match up to those specific keywords with wildcards and you know edge cases and all this stuff. And then you serve an ad and you get a thing, right? Um, so that's sort of the paid search game. So uh, you kind of have two ways you can play it, right? We're all familiar with this. Organic, you're trying to guess who, where they are in the funnel when someone reads a blog post about whatever. Um, ask, answer the question um, and then subject. Uh, it's changing, right, based on algorithms. Um, ignore my spelling error on the plane last night, <laughs> it's late. Uh, and then there's paid search, right? So it's very narrow um, and expensive and competitive, right? So the intent is like you have to catch someone the exact moment they are trying to buy a thing, which rarely happens with you know a $100,000 SaaS product. So like using these techniques that you would sell shoes with um, is not always the best approach. So. Implicit intent is kind of the different way of uh, tackling things. 
So um, if you're not familiar with how this works, so like Bombora and Demandbase and Sixth Sense as well, like they uh, are observing a huge content network. It's like 14 million sites or something crazy, right? And what they're doing is they're adding metadata keywords to content and trying to build bigger layers of context around what this means when you're searching for it. So Forbes write, writes an article about content management systems and why they're boring and whatever. Um, they're tagging this with other types of keywords and then sort of rolling it up into concepts, like Bombora has categories. And what they're doing is saying, OK, I'm reading signals that they might be interested in this, this thing that's not on your site. It's everywhere. So CNN and Forbes and all these like you know, TechCrunch or whatever, um, these are all signals that uh, people are using. Question? Yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, they're not worried about it uh, because they're kind of validating with first party data. That's how they explained it. But everyone, all these platforms are keeping it pretty close to the chest of what they're going to do when that happens. So we'll see. I don't have a good answer for that. Um, we're, with personalization, we're also investing in first party. And then UTMs are always your safe fallback. And so we leverage a lot of that, which we'll talk about. Yeah, the apocalypse is definitely going to be a concern. Um, that apocalypse, not the other one. Um, so <clears throat> the coverage. So if you're curious about like how extensive this is, so they've got a, you know millions of websites in the network, and then Bombora, which is like a yeah, six cents piggybacks on Bombora data. They kind of incorporate it, so you get the benefit of a little of both, or you can subscribe to something like Bombora itself. Um, but there's a ton of data there. And that's really what you're paying for, is like they're monitoring all of this, categorizing it, making it portable, making it easy to decide things against. And then um, you're, you're able to drop people in a bucket, essentially. That's what you're paying for, right? So not something you can really do with paid search, right? Because that's not going to tell you. You can sort of get an audience, but you can't do like uh, company filters and all that stuff. It just gets really hard. Um, so another thing these tools are trying to do is like there is a ton of noise in this, right? Even those examples we were looking at, like anyone who works at a company probably Googles something about their job like 10 times a day, 20 times a day. So you might be saying, oh, this stupid um, like email program, I'm trying to like fix this thing, right? Like that's not necessarily we're looking to change email platforms. And so it's trying to like balance all this stuff and calculate all these intense signals to try to say, ah, this is a clear differentiation from the background noise then that truly represents a change versus just the every you know day-to-day -day stuff, which is a challenge. Like they're not always good and they're not always comparable based on the industries, right? Sometimes there's variance. And so if you ever go down this route, like trying these out, always ask them for samples of uh, their data so they can prove the use case there, right? Um, and so you can kind of get into this loop of um, content where you know you're using six cents to, or something to say what are uh, prospects searching for. That would be like your of the Bombora network or six cents network. What are our clients, potential clients, really interested in? Then you could feed it back into like we need to write content for these kinds of things because this is like the cutting edge stuff. And then it rolls back, and then you're starting to own terms from that. And it's a loop. So it kind of adds on to your um, content strategy versus just like Google Trends, right? Something like that, which is like really general um, and not very specific. So there's all kinds of little ways you can use some of this data to feed back into something like personalization, um, which is what we're getting to. Any questions on that In intent or how it works? OK. OK, so segments. This would be. Um, so the intent is more of like activity, things are doing, and then segments help us group that into something manageable that we can use. So uh, with Sixth Sense, you get this thing. And if there's any more technically minded people in the audience, like this is really, really valuable. The ands and ors and logic, it's really solid gold. So here's an example. Um, from our own use case, we use it. Is this a laser? No, okay. 
Um, so, you know, for us, right, like we, we monitor Drupal keywords and then agency, right? You combine those two things, now it's like someone who needs our help, right? But one of those two things on their own might not um, be relevant. Digital agency is too broad. Drupal's too broad as well. Like we're liking for the Venn diagram between those two things and that's what this stuff lets you do. So if you can think about it like, oh, if we could personalize our site with these two audiences where they converge, that's what we're after here. Um, and then uh, something like B2B marketing or ABM, but not media buying, right? So now you can exclude. The exclusions are almost more important than the inclusions so that you can really tighten up your audience and say only someone like this should and will see our ads and our variations on the website. So all this is like precursor, just getting something to show up on the website. But thinking about how the segments work and who you're trying to target is important because that tells you what you're going to say to that specific audience um, and when you're going to say it. So uh, extending on keywords, keywords can also imply uh, your stage. So this is a sample set. Um, hopefully you can read that. But something like employee HR tool, SaaS, whatever product. Um, imagine some, you know, uh, uh, maybe a, a company feedback tool. The name's probably missing a vowel, something like that. Um, but, you know, when you're researching the concept, that's more of your awareness stage. So you can sort of infer that if they're at this stage and they fall within our target, they're pretty early. They're researching concepts. I might have a problem. I don't know I have a problem. This is normal keyword stuff, right? Your consideration is like, now I know I need a thing. I might not know what that thing is, but um, I know I need a thing. And then it's like, well, is thing A versus thing B, which one's better, right? So if you can break up your keywords like that, you can actually use uh, products like Sixth Sense to start to build your segments that way, where it's like, I can help you, algorithm, tell me what, where people are at in this funnel, because I know that if they look at competitor name, that they're, they're pretty far along the process, and I should talk to them now, versus I just want to watch and be aware of people thinking about employee satisfaction. Right, And the nice thing is when like segments are dynamic, so when people start doing the next thing, they can move between the two, which is really huge. You can actually see their progress through segments. And now when you think about adding personalization on top, hopefully it's clear like what messaging you might put forward for each group. Like one might be orientation messaging, might be your um, you know, your annual reports around a problem. We work with a company that does um, uh, like sort of mental health um, ERP stuff. And so when they're, when they're researching t teams like um, employee wellness, things like that, it's like that's a long way from I need to replace my ERP with an alternative I've never heard of. But they can say state of mental health is in this bucket, serve them that versus down here, right? So it just makes your library a, a little bit more relevant. Um, so spheres of intent here, this would be like um, thinking of them not quite as separate buckets, but like as big as you want to go. We only want to target um, engineering companies and only engineering companies in the US and only engineering companies do aerospace and only ones that are 100 million, 100 million and above and then only ones that are researching whatever. You know, you can get the point. Like tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And then you can do things within those groups and have little splinter groups. And sometimes we're just um, uh, making little pockets of just trying to understand what's the activity within this subset of a market, right? Um, so like very specific products, very specific keywords, um, uh, competitors, all those kinds of things. You can build these little pockets and personalize against them or not, right? And then. The intent, what we would call intent accounts, are like the highest buying signals with the most activity, and you're sort of setting those thresholds. And then you can tune the website to talk directly to that group. Um, so this is a, a thing that you, like, if you, again, if you've never, like, gone down the procurement route with one of these tools, it's always hard to just get at the, just show me the thing that I can play with. Um, so hopefully this gives you a sense of some of the things you can do. So like 
So imagine your big bucket is every, every company that I care about. Let's say you have 5,000 companies that might buy whatever it is you do. Uh, then within that, like you could say, anyone who's been to the website more than five times, show me those people. Or that plus uh, um, they've also clicked on these ads, plus they've uh, had keyword activity around these five things in the last five days or a week or whatever. So you can keep compounding all those filters together with ands and ors to build all of these subgroups, right? And then there's AI pieces now that will then predict scoring um, on top of all of that, like the likelihood of fit based on your sales force past history. Like it's observing your close rate and your op open ops and all that stuff. And it's trying to predict, oh, this matches a lot of other things that you've closed. You probably want to talk to these people, right? So very powerful on the filter side. And like I said, a lot of them we use just to watch. So if you're just a content person, you're just like, well, what do people care about? Look at this group and then what keyword activity is, is popular in that group plus the pages they're visiting. It's a lot better than GA, which is just showing you page views and then maybe where you're from, maybe a UTM code like served from a very specific campaign, but this can tell you what content are uh, prospects really after, and then you can really lean into that from a personalization standpoint. So just a, a little bit of a closer view here. You can see on some of these, like, you know, bump or company search topics in the medium. Like when someone's looking at a G2, like they're in pretty deep consideration mode, so they can flag like anyone who starts looking at G2 for our SaaS product versus other people's, you can start to personalize against trust radius, all this kind of stuff. Um, direct integration with LinkedIn campaigns. So um, this is all, uh, I think, a good um, sort of framework to think about everything that's happening outside the site. It's like one dimension outside with all of your campaigns and everything. It doesn't it really get talked about too much here, like at DrupalCon, um, but there's this whole ecosystem happening that's feeding all of this, these data points into a Drupal site that's kind of just dumb just sitting there, it's like, hey, welcome. And you're like, well, I've been here six times. Like, can you show me something new based on what I've been doing? Um, so that's really what we're after with this. But you can see on this company profile stuff, um, like estimated employees, um, if you're not familiar with industry codes, those are like the government codes that um, specify like certain industries, like mm -hmm. agriculture or education or whatever. So you can do that on the fly and, and pick people out based on their IP address. and all kinds of other things that they're doing from a identification standpoint. So uh, we divide segments into a couple of types. So like outreach, that would be like, if you have salespeople, right? Like highest intent, you need to talk to them right now, like right, right now, um, you wanna know who those are. Um, watch lists and then sort of niche nuance, like maybe we're trying to get into a new vertical or a new market you might actually set that up, warm them up, like kind of watch what things are doing, and then develop an ad campaign, and then sort of roll that out, test the audience, get some traffic, and then develop that feedback loop. So it's really a lot of just this concept. I don't, I don't want to watch 5,000 people. I want this thing to like light up when there's a couple of people that I should look at and then see. So it's a big priority game because we all only have so much time um, if you have limited salespeople, li limited marketing people, you have limited writers, it's like, what do we write about this, this quarter? You're you know, doing quarterly planning for content strategy. It's like, what are our content pillars? It's like, well, go here. What are the top five things people are looking at? And then you could dig in and say, that's a pretty good bet versus you know, watching our competitors and they're talking about X. It might be not the best strategy, All right? So um, we've got our intent, signals, we've got our keywords that helps us sort of prioritize and box people in. Then we get insights to help see if we're on the right track with a very specific company. So this is more ABM specific stuff, but um, TAL means um, target account list, if you're not familiar. That's like who you want, you don't care about anyone else, you're focused on this list. Um, a static list would be like uh, a, a group, a, a, <laughs> a leadership team says, we like all these logos, we want these 100 people. And you're like, okay, we'll try to get on Google's list. Um, 
Agile would say, uh, we're going to take all these signals and then sort them in highest intent to lowest intent and then take those top 100 and go after them because the odds of us closing them are better than your vanity list of the logos you recognize, for example. Um, so you can use this as a way to prioritize how you would go to market with like a personalization campaign. So you might even take the top 10, let's say they're in a specific vertical, then go with that as your, your first personalization cam uh, campaign out of the gate. And then you don't need, um, well, then it's constantly updating. You're just sort of let go of the, if only this list was perfect, everything would work out. You just let it go, because it doesn't matter. Um, so another thing that you probably have not seen if you've not been through the sales process before or have seen these platforms. So this is a very specific account. And within an account, you get all kinds of nifty secrets. Um, website visitors, branded keywords within the Sixth Sense network. Again, that's not search traffic. That's on their network, all the cumulative traffic that they're saying, this company is interested in website migration. And they've done it 10 times within the last 30 days. Like, oh, OK. So you can imagine how you would craft an email follow-up based on that. Um, top pages visited by the account, pretty easy. Um, but still more valuable than Google, because now it's like only people at this account, this company, are viewing these pages. And we even see which cities they're from. Um, so you can really start to narrow, OK, it's probably this digital marketing person that's based in Raleigh, like looking at these pages, um, that kind of thing. right? How might we engage with them in an appropriate way without being creepy? Um, and then you can see like on the, the keywords here, this um, bigger exposed list, the, yeah, the numbers are just the frequency. So you can really start to weight like how much of that is happening. Um, and it's really insightful. You can just like click down company lists, and I'll do this like every Monday, and just be like, hmm, that's weird. Like it's starting to shift. You'll start to see trends over different companies and all that kind of stuff. Um, it also organizes everything in a timeline. So if you're thinking about um, when to uh, do something, or let's say you've got a personalization campaign running, you can kind of see how it's working based on someone visited this thing, then they got an email, and it stacks all in order, and you can sort of see that cumulative effort um, compiling over time. Um, Question. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. How are you doing the, uh, the company? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, so Sixth Sense has a, it's like a, what's the KFC, the magic herbs and spices? It's like 14 <laughs> magic ingredients. So it's doing some kind of like Dun & Bradstreet comparison plus IP plus its own proprietary plus Bombora. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's pretty accurate. So we were on demand base right when COVID happened. And we saw a 40% hit on their accuracy because everyone was working from home. So they didn't know how to handle it. It was pretty brutal. Um, but Sixth Sense uh, has more. And we didn't see that <laughs> jump. But it's all, it's all secret. We have no idea. But it seems pretty accurate from experience. Um, yeah, so campaigns, pages, uh, keywords, all that kind of stuff. So you can really start to see um, sort of the development of an idea, too. Like they started researching a thing. They come to the site. They click some ads, they come back to the site. So that B2B journey, you can really see it start to manifest in this kind of thing. Location, this is, if you didn't know that this technology exists, it does. So if you are bothered by all those sales calls, like this is how people are getting your info. <laughs> uh, so you have visit locations, and then there are cross-references to your company, and what your job title is, and that's how people get your info. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of how the game is played right now. But that's more on the sales side and outreach. Um, but again, like Sixth Sense specifically knows that this is all irritating. And so the trick is the timing. Like if it's helpful and you, you are like, hey, I know you're interested in these things. Um, you see a lot of cumulative, act cumulative activity. Uh, you increase your odds of not getting the uh, door slammed in your face or your email getting read when it hits at the right time. All right, so we talked about this, density searches, all that stuff. OK, so what does all this have to do with personalization? So we know who we're targeting. 
we know what stage they're at. Now, this is the thing that people just never think about, is like, we have to say something interesting. <laughs> because a lot of people are like, if only I could put this in front of people, and then it's like, well, we just changed the image. And you're like, well, okay. It's a start, but um, it's, it's sort of like message first a little bit. Um, so like when we do display ads, something like this, like we're really thinking about how the keywords are bubbling things up so that we can actually use those specific terms in ads or whatever, or to inform like the pieces of content that we're producing next. Um, so back to our um, stage example, like using these same keywords for our hypothetical HR platform, you can see like, oh, um, I'm seeing a lot more traffic against recognition than engagement. Skew the ads towards recognition. Right? It's like you're actually tilting the message with some of this um, insight that the platforms are giving you. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, it, it, more aligned with um, the buying process, but using those keywords to inform what you're actually saying. So we've all heard this to death at this point, I think. <laughs> um, it's still valid, uh, but I sort of think about, um, so in B2B, right, like if we could just have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people and be like, hey, where are you at? And you're like, oh, I'm not really interested in things, but I'm kind of wondering about this problem. And you're like, oh, interesting, I have this thing. Here, read this thing and maybe come back in six months. Like, we would just do that if we could do that, but we can't. So we have to have these like artificial things like sites and site maps and searches and all this junk, right, to sort of simulate this and answer these questions. But it, I think it's useful to think about personalization in terms of a conversation. When you think about it, it's like, oh, I'm responding to what you're saying. I'm listening to you, I'm seeing, I'm reading some cues and saying, yes, I have this thing. Is that me? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, am I done? It's like, okay. Um, right, so just it's feeling more natural, right? And who knows how GBT is gonna change this. Maybe one day like we won't need B2B websites at all. We'll just have content streams and it just answers all your questions for you. But for now, um, this more give and take is sort of what we're after. Um, and so that you're, you can read some of these signals and respond, right? So I'm, so think of it like right intent, right content in the right context. It's maybe a little bit of a better evolution to that idea of um, right person, right time, because you, you should know all these things already. So now it's just about um, recognizing their intent when they land and say, I know someone got here and I know exactly how they got here and where they're at so that I can respond. And it just smooths out the process and you don't have to like dump welcome messages and they don't have to wade through like six different UIs and all this stuff because a lot of historical UX like couldn't count on any of this. So you had to like walk people through or have a choose your own adventure that applies to literally everyone, which makes it a mess for everyone, right? So if you can narrow things down, it's gonna make things simpler. So get to the modules, um, right? So smart content is our tool set. So you can do a bunch of things, right? Um, and what it does is it takes essentially block layout, right? So um, layout builder or anything component based and says, well, I can show A or I can show B based on very specific rules. So, you know, first time visitor or segments or whatever, right? So if you've got blocks, if you've got a site, um, you can use smart content to show it in different use cases. So I've, I've used this metaphor for a long time. Um, more like sites, like you only ever see one face of the Rubik's Cube. And you're sort of swapping things out into different combinations and then you're trying to make that combination as relevant as possible. But it's not changing like every single thing on the site, but maybe 20%, something like that. And, um, but I think this metaphor is good because you're also having to maintain all the other sides of the cube, like all that other content, and so it gets complicated. You just need to be strategic about how many variations that you manage on the back end. Um, so all this intense stuff also just concentrates your effort onto, well, we only have so much time, let's personalize for this group that we know is throwing up a bunch of signals that hopefully we can capitalize on. So, uh, stuff you can personalize on. So, anything in the browser, you can do. 
Um, so, you know, geo, all that kind of stuff. Uh, clicks, views, set events, right? Capture it if they clicked on this, um, that kind of thing. Um, so self-ID, that'd be like UTM strings from any ad platform. Email activity, it's like Pardot, MailChimp, whatever, Marketo. Um, lead scoring, depending on the system. Uh, segments, first party, um, and then cookies. Like we've done that ourselves, like just write, cook, write your own cookies to the question about um, third party, right? So then you'll know like when they come back, they, were, they clicked on this service line, so we're, it's a good guess, they were looking at that, whatever. And then all your third party platforms would be the next um, effort. Right, so even something like IP info, which is like sort of the lean version of this, might be a place you could start. It's usually for like localization, something like that, um, but it's definitely doable. So, uh, segments. So, uh, the language is somewhat confusing because it's, uh, we're setting this up in Drupal and it's not sort of pulling in segments, but you can sort of uh, combine the two. Right? So you're building these rules in Drupal um, and saying, look, if anyone comes to the site and they match these criteria, do this thing. Right? Um, and you can combine them, order them, stack order them, set defaults, all that kind of stuff. So this is all through the UI. Um, so marketing people can do this. Um, we've tested it. I can do it, so other people can do it. Um, and it lets you sort of say, okay, I've set all this stuff in Sixth Sense. I know my segments. All I need to do is sort of set it up in the Drupal side to mirror, right, in order to show these things. And this is the most powerful thing of this whole presentation. This is the output from the Sixth Sense tracking script on your site, or on our site, or any site that's running it. So if you can see, um, this is saying we got a match on Here's their region, here's their industry, here's their city, here's their, their zip code, blah, 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 blah. Um, state, city. It also will do all those segments that we set up earlier will show up here. So it's returning, they're in this segment, they're in this segment. And it'll sh if you have the AI enabled, it'll say their score is a 90, or profile fit, or match fit, whatever. So right from the output script, it's doing all the work for you. We just need to say, um, what do we do with it, right? So we let Sixth Sense do the heavy IDing so that smart content can show the right thing, right? Any questions on that? Yes? Um, so GDPR, what Yeah. Um, so we don't actually store any data right. on our end. So if, uh, so Sixth Sense is covered, with their GDPR. Yeah. And so if you're normal blanket site, um, we're usually, I can't remember the name of it, we're mostly using third parties for that part too, because they keep up with it and everything like that. So it falls under that umbrella because we're not actually storing any data. If we get into first party cookies, yeah. then we will, but it's usually um, wrapped into um, whatever enterprise company we're working with, like their GDPR platform. Yep, 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 exactly. Um, so you could imagine sort of a combination um, campaign thing um, that has some parts here. You might have you know, anonymous and ads with Sixth Sense. Uh, you might have a, a satellite LinkedIn campaign, you know, targeting specific roles for those audiences and segments that we've got running in Sixth Sense. Um, you might do, you know, Nurture emails through Pardot, excuse me, direct mail, and then PPC display, all that stuff. So then you send all that traffic to the site, and then um, smart content can personalize some of these variations um, off of that stuff, right? So just showing some very specific examples, um, just examples though, right? So let's say you have um, a, uh, this is a, uh, like a hazardous material cleaning company something like that, and uh, they have vertical focus, right? So now you're skewing the whole homepage, or the entire site, rather, with industry focus. So it's copy, it's imagery, it's pulling in secondary content here, it's calls to action, all that stuff. So if you have a Sixth Sense 
segment that's targeting that industry, and they're in the awareness stage, this would make a good sense for the hospitality vertical, right? And all we're doing is setting up the segment in Drupal to say, if segment equals hospitality, show X, right? Maybe a later stage. So it didn't change any of the media, but it changes the headline and it changes the call to action. This would be like later stage, maybe they came back, or maybe I know that they only clicked on this ad, they have to be down funnel because I was retargeting, so they've clearly been here before, something like that. So again, you're kind of picking up the intent and saying, well, what would I say if I knew someone had already been here? It's like, well, I'm not gonna repeat myself, like here. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sort of push the offer a little bit harder um, and change the action to speak to sales. Different industry entirely, right? So that's like, now we're talking about hospitals and we're pushing white papers about hospital expenses, all that stuff. So the idea with industry specifically, most companies that we work with, I would say, enterprise B2B, they, they're usually vertically focused, so it's a good bet. And usually, they have those ordered in like the most valuable to them. So even if we're just starting with default and then one industry, that's the one to start with, and so you're only managing one variation, but it's the most important variation, and then you can lean into that um, and try to customize it. Now we're not like we're not like spoofing anything. Like all this content is real. We're just trying to give ourselves like a tilt and a lens that says maybe hospitality and hospitals. I should have picked two examples that were different. Hospitals are um, maybe a small part of our business, right? That we're trying to get into, but we don't want them to feel that way. Like we're putting a lot of money and R and D into this. We really want to get that first case study. We're going to make it feel like hospitals are just as important as hospitality. Right, that would be a way you could sort of alter that perception um, through website personalization. Versus them, general message, industries, hospitals, like counting on someone to do that, you're already like 30% drop off rate. In sales? Yeah, yeah, sales. yeah. yeah. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good uh, preview. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll touch on CDPs at the end. Um, the other way you, you think about this, if you're doing like one to one ABM, is like VIP stuff. Like you're sending video mailers with a vanity URL or QRs that are making a comeback. Um, something like that. You could really target to only people who you could not see this variation unless you had this golden ticket, whatever thing. Um, that's something you could you could think about as well. Um, oh no. Well, I had a big site image with a bunch of pages. Um, you'll have to imagine it. Uh, the the idea was, you know, we, you see a lot of this personalization junk uh, focused on one page, but when you think about website segments, um, they are across all pages. So when you zoom out, let me see if I can reload this because I think it might be worth it. Oh, there it goes, okay. Um, it was just messing with me. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so you get a site, right? All these variations, all these um, subtle product pages that are slightly different. Now start changing all the calls to action. How many touch points is that? 100? And you only need one variation that swaps that out intelligently, right? And so this is, this is the big thing that you can make a small tweak like um, push this piece of content up here, right? A little secondary call to action. Change it to this in this case. You just have a hole there and you know we've got 10 things we're going to fill that hole. We're not going to overcomplicate it and change every possible thing on the Rubik's Cube. But that and the uh, call to action might be enough depending on the use case. So that was sort of the point to make there. Um, so let's talk about reporting and then into CDP and then I'll just look at the site specifically. Oh, there it goes. Um, okay, so this is the, my favorite thing about um, the collection of modules. Um, these are all on Drupal.org, uh, is the data layer module. So 
you can, every time you see a variation on the website, it pushes an event to the data layer. Uh, and if you're not familiar, that's just Google Analytics and all its event tracking. And so you can see this uh, box down here, it just tells me what variation was seen and the label that I gave it in the CMS. And so by nature of having that, I can say, well, if anyone saw that variation, I know they're in an X, which means I can create a segment, need another word, a Google Analytics segment narrowing to that, and then all my conversion metrics match. Now I can say personalization A, give me to, against the default. Personalization A against paid traffic, whatever. Time ranges, all that stuff. So you're using all your normal data studio dashboards with all your normal KPIs. You're just injecting this one variable, essentially, and then building a segment that you can compare things. So you don't have to buy like Domo and Tableau and all this junk. Um, just make it a lot simpler to get started, which is the biggest part. Now the holy grail is the CDP side of things, so the customer data platform. It's so like feeding this stuff back into or reading from a CDP like Acquia or Segment or Snowflake, one of those tools. Um, that's something that we're starting to get into because honestly, like people are usually behind on the CDP, like everything I've talked to talked about up to this point. People aren't quite there yet, um, but they're starting to. And so where we're focused on the CDP side is like, okay, uh, for current customers, something like what are your categories for what product you already have versus what you, the natural upsell is. Some Salesforce logic figures all that stuff out and then send it to the CDP, like likely add-on might be X. Then the personalization side says, oh, we're gonna treat it like a bank. Like if you've ever been to a bank website, everyone has, right? Like the homepage is the only opportunity to ever catch an existing customer before they log in to their bank account. It'd be that kind of thing, like recognizing that current customers are there, pr uh, promote our customer engagement event, here's an add-on that might work for you, and you're kind of tilting that whole first experience for um, existing customers, right? And sometimes we, com we combine that with a login cookie that doesn't track their, it's not like a single sign-on, but it just says, I have logged in at some point, right? If, you're, if you have a SaaS platform or something like that, so then you can tie that into, and then fork off into, we're just watching our existing customers and what are they interested in and preempting how they might grow the account depending on your use case. Does that answer your question? Cool. Okay, so quick rundown on the modules. This is very tiny. Um, but the, the first two are like really the content blocks. Data layer pushes that to the, the uh, GA side. There's also an A-B module, so within variations, now you can do A-B testing, too, using the same thing with GA, right? So that one's relatively new. UTM strings, that's just one where you, it plugs in the option to track UTMs you know, off of ad clicks as a uh, variation, and then both demand base and six cents. Um, so those are all there for everyone to try and test out if you're going down that route. Uh, and let us know if you have feedback. Um, the, dev team and uh, the product team on that side is always interested in um, suggestions and feedback and use cases. So feel free to reach out if you want to play with it. Um, and then I'll show, I'll show a site that we've got it running um, real quick and then we'll wrap up. Um, so this is um, that demo site that I was showing, right? So it's using Layout Builder. Um, we've got all of our uh, layout blocks here. Um, this is persona one. I've got a UTM string here that shows persona one. If I change it to persona two, right? It swaps out to persona two, um, and that's it. It's cached as well. Um, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Our VP of technology is here somewhere. He knows how that works, so if you wanna come by the booth and ask him. Uh, but it's super slick, and um, Google will also read the default version um, and not to this, and you don't get dinged for swapping, right? So like the shady swapping. Um, yeah, you don't get dinged for that. So he, they have figured out all that stuff. But the idea is that, let's say you had a LinkedIn campaign, right? Like you could know only people who have seen this campaign would see this variation. Then we would, this block would 
talk to the data layer and say, hey, I, someone looked at me, and then now we have our personalization segment, right? Um, so if I jump to, um, so this is our persona um, segment in Drupal, right? So you can see uh, if campaign UTM equals persona one, I can open this up. If all the conditions are true, if any are true, I can add a condition. Um, that here's all the browser stuff. IP info, we have it installed on this demo site, so you can look at you know, all this stuff. Here's our UTM, any of these terms, you can combine all these together. Um, and then we have some default stuff. So this is it. I mean, this is all this does is sets this uh, rule up. Um, and then we have those existing um, conditions. So that if I go to edit the layout here, Yeah, so here's um, the blocks that would um, be added here, right? So in the custom block library, I've got homepage header two, persona two, and I just manage it just like every other block, right? So I'm able to add content. It's just duplicates of, of blocks that we already have in place, and then the rules will swap those out. Um, so that is it. Any questions? Yes? Yes. Yes. It will. It will be B. It will be A unless you add the. We have a cookie thing, okay. module as well. So that that will save it essentially. Save the okay. session. Yes. Yes. Next time you will. Yeah. Yeah. In this particular example. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's like the question about first party. Yeah. Like that's where we would set it and have it on our end to maintain it, yep. We have another uh, use case for this where we're doing uh, filters, so we're like saving personalized filters, like I'm interested in this type of content and then pulling in um, like a dynamic block of content, something like that, and then it's saving it so every time you come back it's tuned. So yeah, if it gets more technical than that, I'm gonna direct you to the booth <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you can ask those guys. Any other thoughts, questions? Okay, cool. I'll let you guys out a little early. Thanks, everyone.